Old data is creating a massive problem for U.S. businesses that could usher in the next wave for AI stocks. This problem is costing over $2 trillion a year in cybersecurity, data management, and organization. Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with your weekly market update, 9 a.m. Eastern, every Monday morning, get you ready for the week with the stocks to buy and the biggest market trends you need to see. Nation, I've been slow to invest in AI stocks, I'll admit it, worried that we're in that AI bubble, but this changes everything for me. That $2 trillion megatrend is going to continue to send AI stocks higher. I'm going to detail that megatrend nobody is talking about, which AI stocks will benefit next, but stick around and I'll show you the stocks I'm watching this week and how to invest. Before that, if you've ever wondered what's in my portfolio or want to see the stocks I'm buying, you can now by joining me on the Blossom Social Investing app. The app was created by YouTuber Brandon Beavis for investors and by investors. I just started using it last year and love the app for getting ideas and sharing my portfolio. And this is so much more than just another social media app. You can connect your brokerage accounts or just input your portfolio to track all your stocks in one place. You'll see insights like portfolio percentages and average dividend yield across the entire group. You'll also be able to join more than 90,000 investors in the social feed to see what everyone is talking about. I've shared my portfolio on the app and it's totally free to download, so look for the link I'll leave in the description and check it out. Back to our main topic though, because there is a massive but largely hidden problem within the software community called technical debt, causing system failures, slower performance, and security breaches. It's created through outdated systems and quick fixes in software over decades and could drive AI stocks able to fix it to new highs. Now understand, this is largely a behind the scenes problem that nobody outside the IT departments is talking about and that is gonna mean it's only gonna get worse. Technical debt was behind the 13,000 flight cancellations at Southwest Airlines in December 2022, stranding passengers at the height of the holiday season. It's also been a primary way hackers are attacking software over the past year, including exploits of systems at Google, Apple, and Microsoft. According to IT research firm CISQ, companies are losing $2.4 trillion a year in cybersecurity and inefficient operational performance because of this technical debt. The kicker though, it would only cost $1.5 to fix the problem and update those old systems. Now, why that's not going to happen is the fix would involve companies spending the trillion plus to update all their old outdated software or to start paying for software to be coded correctly. Neither of these is likely. Companies just want to get that next feature added and out the door as quickly as possible to stay competitive and, and for as cheaply as possible. Paying to update their code doesn't bring in any new revenues, and actually drives earnings lower on the expense. And while I am going to show you how this benefits some AI stocks later, the rise of AI could also make this worse as less experienced coders are prompting artificial intelligence to write the code for them. This often creates code that, while it gets the features completed quickly, is not optimized for efficiency or safely. Now, the primary beneficiary here is going to be the cybersecurity companies that are going to continue to see that increased demand through hacking of this old software problem. Because companies are slow to proactively spend and fix those technical debt issues, they're going to end up paying more to cybersecurity companies to protect them. And while the total number of cybersecurity complaints reported to the FBI edged lower in 2022, the total loss surged from $6.9 billion to $10.3 billion, and security breaches were up last year. Palo Alto Networks estimates a 20-fold increase in malicious programs since 2014 and over $8 trillion in cybercrime costs over the decade. I have been heavily investing in cybersecurity stocks lately, many of which are integrating AI into their framework to identify and respond to security breaches. You may not think of these as AI stocks, but they are on the forefront of using artificial intelligence to stop cybercrimes. Researching cybersecurity stocks here, I do like CrowdStrike, ticker CRWD, for its strong revenue growth and higher operating margin, though it is trading more expensively than Fortinet, which also sports a solid profitability. Palo Alto Networks, ticker PANW, may offer the best balance between that growth, profitability, and valuation. Companies in the consulting and services industry could also benefit, and a few are finding ways to use AI to fix the problem rather than make it worse. The banking system still primarily runs on COBOL, an ancient programming language released in the early 1960s that isn't used much anymore. In fact, companies are actually finding it difficult to find engineers that understand it. Services powerhouse Automatic Data Processing, ticker ADP, is using generative AI to help translate that old code, updating it into newer languages like Java and Python. 
IBM is also supporting its customers, marketing its Watson X AI coding assistant as a way to clean up that technical debt. And while shares of IBM have jumped over the last year, it's still relatively cheap compared to a lot of the other AI stocks and could surprise on how much revenue is driven by those AI services. IBM was one of the first on the scene with its natural language AI Watson almost a decade ago and has expanded on it over the years. Because the stock has been such a total dog over the past decade though, the shares still trade for about 24 times earnings, relatively low versus others in the space. Nation, it is in these massive forces where I love to start my stock research. That push of $2 trillion a year helps drive all the stocks benefiting from that theme. Start there and then drill down into the best of breed stocks within cybersecurity and enterprise software services and let the technical debt wave take your portfolio higher. Looking at some of the stocks I'm watching this week, first up, Blink Charging, ticker BLNK, gonna be reporting its earnings on Thursday following a surprisingly strong report from EVGO that sent its shares up as high as 18% after its release. Market share leader ChargePoint Holdings, ticker CHPT, seems to have bungled its first mover advantage in charging, which is translating to the higher than expected revenue for its competitors. I still like and hold shares of CHPT, but federal infrastructure money is likely to boost shares across this industry, and smaller players could continue to outperform. The Vanek Gold Miners ETF, ticker GDX, is still down 3.1% for the year, though that sudden burst in the price of gold has bumped it 14% higher since I started recommending the miners back in mid-February. Central bankers have been slowly replacing the dollars in their reserves with that precious metal and has recently gotten a boost from the drop in interest rates as well. Even before the jump in the price of gold though, I've been recommending the gold miners on the strong cash flows over, a, over their all-in sustaining costs. That's the price the miners need to pay for operational and capex costs to keep the business going, and the average across the industry is just $1,239 an ounce. That is leaving a healthy profit and strong dividend growth across the whole group. Here, I like the GDX for an easy industry-wide investment, and miners like Agnico Eagle Mines ticker AEM for its lower $1,125 per ounce AISC. UiPath ticker PATH reports its earnings on Wednesday and generally beats expectations, but it is already trading expensively, and AI stocks have been hit or miss on earnings this quarter. The company has beaten earnings expectations by an average 217% over the last four quarters, but is trading for 10.9 times revenue. That is a 36% premium to the average multiple of eight times over the past year, and shares are already up 70% over that period. It might be a good candidate for an option strategy, though, that benefits on those large price swings. Maybe a strip stat strategy that we see here, which involves buying two at the money puts and one at the money calls to benefit from those significant price swings in either direction. For example, if I go here to the options for the stock, we're looking at the options expiring this week. I can buy two of the $23.50 strike price puts for $1.94 each, along with the $24 strike price calls for $1.91. That would be a total cost of $5.79 per share. Now this is a high risk, high return strategy, but just as an example of how you can take advantage of that volatility around the AI stocks during these earnings. You can see here the position starts making money if the stock rises past $29.50 with unlimited upside potential, or if the stock falls past $20.60 per share, again with unlimited return potential. Showing you that bigger picture with the sectorspider.com sector tracker here, eight of the 11 stock sectors did close higher last week with the growth sectors lagging as those magnificent seven stocks and others sold off. In fact, the magnificent seven stocks themselves sold off by more than 1.7% in Friday's drop. Safety and dividend sectors rebounded both as investors sought safety in the market's weakness, but also as interest rates fell, made those dividend paying stocks and utilities and consumer staples more attractive. Looking further out, we are starting to see the real estate sector ease back into investor confidence, with the sector rising 4.8% over the past month versus a 2.5% return on the overall market. 24 of the 31 stocks in the sector have been positive over the period, with office and healthcare properties lagging. Now, it's likely the pain isn't quite over for office properties, and I would hesitate on apartment stocks with that surge in new apartment completions last year and this one lowering its rents. The rest of the space, though, should continue to outperform as valuations bottom out and we approach those Fed interest rate cuts. It is all eyes on the CPI inflation report this week, though, and the question is whether February inflation is going to support or contradict what we saw in January. The Consumer Price Index, that CPI, reported last month showed prices rose a higher than expected pace of 3.1% in the year through January. And that spooked the market, sending the S&P down 1.9% on the day alone, and stocks have been fighting to regain those highs ever since. 
Expectations for February's report released Tuesday here are for the headline CPI to remain unchanged at 3.1% annual pace, though the core CPI, so that excludes the volatile uh, food and gas st stuff, is expected to moderate slightly to 3.7%. That would be from 3.9% reported last month. Now, while I do expect inflation to show a continued moderation and possibly come down in under expectations, leading to a huge swing higher in stocks, a higher than expected report would be a temporary death sentence for this market. It would mean the Fed won't start cutting rates until well after June and possibly only a couple of interest rate cuts this year, far worse than the market is now hoping for right now. now either way here, we're likely for an increased volatility and price swings in the overall market this week. Join me on the Blossom social media investing app and see all the stocks in my portfolio with the link below. Or click on the video to the right to see the top AI stocks I'm watching right now, the stocks that are gonna change the world. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.